Welcome to our 4 to 5, everybody. Eric Chilton here with Hunter Funk, Ben Briscoe, and Tim Buckley. Hey, hey, hey. Thanks for joining us, watching us on WFMY News 2, Fire Stick, Roku, and the WFMY News 2 app. Y'all, today has been a day already. I was at the gym oh. halfway through my workout, <laughs> and I realized I had my headbuds in, but I forgot to turn my music on. Oh, no. <laughs> you just left just them on. Total so silence for like, about what, 30 minutes. What are you thinking I was about? Like, Something's wrong here. <laughs> Something's wrong. So, so I'm glad to be here with you guys, feel back to life and in it. Uh, for the next hour, we're going to have tons of fun. We're talking about some Winter Wonderland tickets on sale now. And eggnog, are you ready for that? Mm. 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 This is interesting. I've heard it's ego, like waffle-based eggnog. We'll see mm. what, uh. what, how that is. Really? It doesn't sound I hope bad it doesn't to taste me. awful. Yeah. Like, yeah. Waffle, <laughs> like waffle. actual we'll find eggnog. Out. Let's <laughs> we'll get, we'll get to, to that. <laughs> <laughs> Let's get right to your four to five roundup. We have some new video of the fights at Guilford County High School. The Guilford County Sheriff's Office says there were three fights yesterday at Eastern Guilford High School. Now this is video of the first incident. Deputies tell us it was between four female students. They say it started on the bus on the way to school and continued when they got off. The sheriff's office says a school resource officer broke up the fight and one girl was taken to the hospital after complaining of an injury. Now this is the second video of a second fight. Officials say it was between two male students and it was broken up by an administrator. And the last fight involved two female students and it was also broken up by an administrator. Guilford County Schools sent us this statement in response, reading in part, it's important to note that our schools are a microcosm of what is happening in our communities. We know that mental health challenges have increased drastically as a result of the pandemic across the state and nation. Our schools are not immune. The district says mental health resources are available, students in addition to counselors and social workers. In Davidson County, the school district says a group of students at South Davidson Middle and High School made a false claim about an armed intruder on their campus. After going under lockdown, it was determined that the claim was made to divert attention from one of the reporting students who did bring an airsoft pistol to school that day. Officials say that there was no evidence that the student had plans to do harm. The district uh, says law enforcement will now continue to investigate that incident and appropriate consequences and charges will be administered. In Forsyth County, a man faces murder charges after deputies say he shot into the ceiling of his apartment, killing his neighbor upstairs. It happened yesterday morning on Hockridge Drive in Clemens. Deputies say 20-year-old Amonte Jones shot into the ceiling of his second floor apartment. This was during a domestic disturbance. Jones was arrested and charged with murder. Two other felonies also for discharging a firearm. He is currently and in an effort to reduce gas prices, President Biden announced the release of 15 million barrels of oil from the Strategic Petroleum Reserve. Now, the White House says the move is meant to act as a wartime bridge to increase oil supplies, while the U.S. ramps up domestic production to replace the oil lost to the war in Ukraine. Now, the Biden administration says more oil could be released this winter if needed. Everybody talking about the weather around town. That's what everyone's talking about because it's been cold, right? This is one of our coldest days that we've had in some time. Right now, it's not so bad outside. You just have to kind of forget that we are in the middle of October. Feels more like the winter time. We're at 55 degrees right now with all the sunshine you could stand. This morning, though, we did start in the 20s and 30s, so it was right around freezing for one of the first times this year. Temperatures right now look like this in your neck of the woods. We're in the mid 50s, pretty much every place, low 50s to the north. It's actually warmer than it was yesterday up in the North Carolina mountains and in the foothills. So this is going to be a, kind of the start of a warming trend for us. It'll be slow at first, but then by the weekend when you go outside, it's around 70 degrees. A uh, bit of a breeze outside, still breezy and cool with winds at about 15 miles per hour, but I don't have any weather systems to show you right now. It's just going to be sunny for several days. Overnight tonight, here's where we're headed, right around freezing for pretty much everybody. Some 20s are likely yet again, and this is still we're pretty early for this stuff. It's only the second time we've had a freeze since the year 2000 in the month of October. It doesn't happen that much, so this is pretty unusual. We'll show you tomorrow real quick. This is your Thursday. We'll have that freeze in the morning. Sunshine for the afternoon. We have a chance to touch that 60 degree mark. Remember, the average 
is 70. So we're still about 10 degrees cool for this time of year. After that, we will warm it up for the weekend. I expect to be right around 70 degrees by your Saturday, Sunday and into next week. So whatever you want to do, go eat some barbecue in Lexington, hang Yum. in the backyard, whatever. It's good. Very comfy there. We like that. Hey, don't miss this now. Winter Wonder Lights tickets are on sale at the Greensboro Science Center. This is really cool. It's the perfect combination of education and fun. Every year, the Science Center gets decked out with all the holiday lights. Tickets are $25 if you're not a member of the Science Center and $20 for members. Admission is free, though, for all kids two and under. And the festive outdoor lights experience starts on November 17th. It runs through January 1st. I have seen that in person many times, and they put a lot of time, effort, and money into that, so you need to go check it out. This is the hmm. tunnel. Oh, Ooh. They just cut away from it. It's a big, huge light tunnel you go through. Do you still get to see the animals, or not really? Oh, it, good question. Um, you know, they are, some are there, but if you go at night, right. they take them, yeah, yeah, they take a lot of them in, so some are there. Looks oh. pretty, looks really nice and festive. Is that fake snow? I'm yes. I haven't been here yet. <laughs> yes, yes. <laughs> there was snow in all the videos, I wonder. That's true, is it real or not? <laughs> Could you imagine if they canceled it every day it wasn't snowing? <laughs> like, it doesn't snow here, of course. Sorry, it's not gonna work That would be fun. <laughs> <laughs> Two days a year, it'd be open. That's right. Probably. Your yeah. forecast, like, we're all clear <laughs> except for the Science Center people. <laughs> right. It is closed. A little blizzard right there by <laughs> Country Park. It looks really pretty, though. It I is really, check really that out. Neat. That's and good. They are yeah. they are expanding every year. So the first, you know, they, they have this uh, expansion plan, and and they've spent the right money. So that this company, this company comes in from out of state and does this whole setup. Hmm. So it's very cool. And you've been. So what's your favorite spot? Uh, I like the light tunnel. It's Aww. just because it's it's really long and very bright, and, and it's kind of like LED colors that ripple down the sides and if you look on Instagram as this event's going on people post Ooh. the best places to take pictures around oh, there. so cool. look before you go to make sure you get the best one yeah it's very cool that's good advice well since we're talking about winter we have to talk about eggnog right some love it and eggnog. some hate it <laughs> but here's a reason to give it a try Kellogg's Ego is releasing its first ever Yum. eggnog Ego nog mm. Appalachian sip and cream is a rum based liqueur with cinnamon and nutmeg flavors the the company says it's a great pair with their Eggo waffles to help you keep feeling cozy all winter long. Now that's the big question. I you like guys this, actually try it. But the name cracked me up because it said it's sipping cream. Sipping <laughs> cream. Sipping cream. For you know, a like waffle. Eggnog. Tim does. You're shaking your head, so I thought. I don't have anything to say about the name, but I do <laughs> like eggnog. I think you eggnog is like really eggnog. good, so I, I would try this. Um, it might go good in your coffee as like a coffee creamer. Ooh. Yeah, uh, it seems breakfast for the adults anyway. anyway. Yes, um, I would like this with a little maple bourbon in it. Ooh, Ooh perfect! Like a, a little syrup waffle combination. Yes. Yeah, that's what I'm talking it about. It honestly sounds like rum chata to me. If you've yeah. ever had yeah, that, yeah, that's what it sounds like. I know we've been talking a little bit about fun, festive drinks. Yeah. Trying to figure out some, so if you've got some, send them over. That is interesting. I didn't realize <laughs> Perfect I four o'clock conversation, right? Know, right? Yes. Oh, it's five o'clock somewhere. Yeah, it's right. almost five o'clock here. We are 52 minutes away. That's, that's the way we've got your countdown. Right. A lot of people don't like eggnog, though. Uh, I love you? it. That is true. Yeah. I, I have mixed feelings. No, okay. The older I get, the more I like it. As a kid, I was like, this stuff's terrible. Yeah. Really? Oh, Agreed. I, I can't yeah. think about it either. Like, I don't want to think about the eggs yeah. involved. No. I just want to enjoy the taste. It's so expensive, too. It is it expensive. Is good, good ones. Yeah, if you've never good. had the Homeland Creamery, um, yes. local Guilford County spot, mm -hmm. uh, they make their own eggnog, and it's the best I've ever had. Yeah, so, sure. I think hmm. maybe we should do a blind eggnog taste test. We, can, we should do time. that. Ooh. One of them will be spiked with Eggos. Eggos. <laughs> <laughs> I never thought Kellogg's would have an alcoholic an drink, al though. That's what cracks me yeah, up. so wholesome. That's what I'm saying. So well, hey, we want to know what you think about this, too. Weigh in on the 4 to 5 live stream. By the way, while you're on Facebook, did you know we have an exclusive Facebook group? It's called the 4 to 5 Club. Just search for it on Facebook and click Join Group. Let's do a quick push to that, and we'll get you there so we can all talk.
boy, is it a jam-packed weekend. There's mm -hmm. the Lexington Barbecue Festival, mm. so much else, but I got one more thing to put on your radar. Over the next few days, if you're in Raleigh, you gotta check out the Film Fest 919. It's a five day long festival featuring new productions and several events. Yeah, tonight is their opening night and they're giving people a chance to catch the films before hitting the big screens. This is really cool. Our official News 2 movie review expert Manning Frank stopped by the event before the events kick off actually to find out what it's all about. Randy, Carol, I'm so excited to be able to have the basically the founders, directors, the all extraordinaire of Film Fest 919 here in North Carolina. So tell me, what is the history of Film Fest 919 uh, and how did we get here? Carol and I have worked together for many, many years now, and we wanted to do another festival in a community that really thrives on the arts. And in the fall time of year, when you get all these like, really meaty pictures that are gonna be up for awards consideration. To give these communities a chance to see what's at the bigger festivals way before they come out, but at in a way that the community can actually attend these festivals, where it's affordable and it's in their backyard. We always have an eye on films that um, that tell different stories. And instead of seeing some of the you know blockbuster films, they see, uh, smaller films, and that small is kind of a misnomer because they're not small films. They're amazing movies, and um, but they're they're not as high profile in the beginning. What is uh, your pitch basically to to North Carolinians who may not be, get the chance to see like a Knives Out on anything but a Netflix streaming service? By coming to a festival, you're not just sitting in an auditorium and watching a movie, which is a great place to see a movie and where you should. These theaters now have bars, they have you know great lobbies, and you're gonna develop friendships that could last forever. It's a whole experience. It's more for the community to be able to watch these movies and talk about it. It's like, oh my God, you know, they'll see a movie coming out four months later. It's like, wait a minute, I saw that one. Yeah. You know, it, they get excited. And then when they watch the Oscars, they, thought, uh, they see films that they got to see very early on, some of which will still have not been released. And that's what I've noticed is that it's almost like you get to be you get to be a part of this little club, you know, that maybe people from North Carolina may not always get the chance to, but it builds that community. So Randy, mm -hmm. Carol, thank you guys so much for what you guys are doing here for film in North Carolina. And we're looking forward to go to Film Fest 919. Dude, North Carolina is a cool place to live. It, it, I would lot, agree. Lots of good things. Yeah. So many great events just like this all the time. This one, um, they're giving you a sneak peek of the movie Devotion, which stars Jonathan Major. So that's at 630 at Caraway Crossing in Chapel Hill. Manning is going to be there, so you can Woo. catch him and get your opinion. Today. But you get to see these movies before they hit the I wonder if screen. our film critic is going to be taking a note. Oh, like oh like yes. Has to, yeah. right? Yeah. Has to. I'm kind of jealous, though, because now he's going to, I mean, we can go as well. But <laughs> at least now he's like, he gets to see all these before they get launched. Four months in all advance? That's pretty cool. Yep. Yep, and he's like now an official, he's like a, an accredited movie critic. It's not like, you know, he just likes movies. I want critic in my title. Wouldn't that be cool? That'd be nice. What would you critique? <laughs> mm, everyone? No, I'm just kidding. I'm just playing. <laughs> I want you to get a PhD in something because Dr. Funk is about the coolest thing I've ever heard. Fun fact, twin brother almost became a doctor. Really? We were pushing for it so bad, but. You'd have to start a band then. Though. Yes, that's yeah. what I'm thinking you're right, of. You're right. Dr. Funk's Funkatorium. Dr. Like yeah. Dr. Funk and the All-Stars. Yeah, I like. <laughs> I like all of that. All right. I think that's a good plan. Let us know on Facebook what you think owner's band's name should be, and we'll be right back. Love to know.
first frost of the year. Hey, you all made it through, right? This is that cold morning we've been talking about for a long while. Numbers like this, that's what we woke up to. In fact, a lot of 20s showing up on the board. Siler City, 26 degrees earlier today. Greensboro at 31. Everybody was below freezing, except for a couple stragglers there for some reason. But either way, I think this is pretty significant for us. The record low, 28, didn't quite get there at PTI, but it was close. And looking back at the record books, this is a couple of weeks earlier than where we usually see our first frost. But, you know, recent decades, it's been going later and later. This is only the second time since the year 2000 where we've had our first freeze in October. Lately, it's mostly been happening in November. November, and that's kind of the way the climate has been going. But this year, a little bit on the chilly side. Uh, 50s for the afternoon so far. Those are your high temperatures. Looking at Winston-Salem right now, a live shot of the cities. We're looking at a little bit of leaf change out there. Temperature is 56 degrees. Greensboro, a nice day as well to be outside. You just have to bundle up a little bit. 55 with a bit of a breeze in the Gate City. Now, if we zoom things out across North Carolina, it's cold everywhere. Cool, I should say. Right around 60 at the coast, 40s up in the North Carolina mountains. And this is something that's affecting all of the eastern United States. It's very cool. 60 this time of year. New Orleans, their average high is still close to 80. So it's very cool in much of the eastern U.S. But that is about to change. That cold streak uh, to our north is going to kind of pull away a little bit. So we'll cut off that flow of chilly air from Canada and start to send it out of here. So tomorrow still very similar to today. But that high pressure to our south is going to start to bring in warmer air to the west over the next couple of days. And so by Friday, we're warming a little bit more into the mid 60s. And then by the weekend, I think we'll be right there in those 70s for you. And that will stick around into next week. Keep in mind that is average for this time of year, right around 70. The jet stream lifting north, warmer air filling in those gaps. And we'll keep that around into next week. Little leaf update for you, by the way. Uh, highest updates of the North Carolina mountains or highest elevations, I should say. They're past peak. We're starting to see those leaves fall off the trees. But the high color, the peak color, it's still there in Boone and Blown Rock and some of the popular mountain towns. In the foothills, closer to home, places like Pilot Mountain, Hanging Rock, Stone Mountain, they should be getting close to peak color this weekend. I would get out there if I were you before it's done. Here in the Triad, we're not that far away either. All this cold weather is really bringing out the leaf color earlier than usual. And so I think we'll be in the peak right around here over the next seven to 10 days. Seven day forecast, look at all the warmth we have. Getting into the 70s next week. Next chance for rain will not be until Wednesday.
Ooh, look at that. It's beginning to look a lot like winter in parts of the Midwest. Some communities in Michigan got more than a foot of snow oh and freeze warnings are in place all the way down to the Gulf of Mexico. Whoa. Yeah, even here at home, we've seen snow falling in Boone and many in the triad woke up to frost on their windshields. Now, keeping that in mind, I asked some of you guys on Facebook to see if you're ready for winter. These are some of my favorite comments here. Taya says, can't wait. Wayne says, no way. I feel like a lot of people agree with that. Our own Amber Lake says, nope. Nope. nope <laughs> it's the short nope. answers for me here. <laughs> Pam says, never will be. Wow. <laughs> Aaron says, our very own producer here, says he's not looking forward to driving on icy roads or getting to the store and seeing all of the bread, milk, and water off the shelves. I'm yeah. not used to that. We got it, yeah. John says he would like to have a longer stretch, stretch of fall temperatures before winter mm -hmm. weather arrives, but in North Carolina, Carolina, it can change quickly. Part of his job consists of being outside. That doesn't sound very fun, but I that's don't think fun. it's that bad compared to Idaho, if I'm Listen, being 100% oh no, honest. Oh no. That's where I'm from. Seeing that video, I'm like, I'm so glad I don't live there. Thank goodness. <laughs> it, it's kind of funny when we do this. We just like, we gawk at other weather, like, ooh, that looks bad. Look at that. And we're yes. just, we're fine here. I right? feel like, <laughs> I wonder, do you think those TV stations are showing videos in North Carolina being like, look how great it is look down there? No. I probably no. with the not, fall, though. Not unless it's a visitnorthcarolina.com <laughs> commercial, then they will. When I lived in Florida and Tampa, we had a segment on the weather mm -hmm. when I did the weather for the morning show, and it literally was reason why we live here and we would make up a number like number 342 and we'd show 12 <laughs> inches of snow in Syracuse and, and, and just to rub it Wait, in. I kind of love that. Is that. Funny. Because everybody from Florida is from the nor Northeast, most yes. of them. So. Uh, a lot of snow up there, even a little early for them and they don't usually like it. I, a lot of people here, when I posted about this, they were jealous. They say, we want that beautiful snowfall, bring it Whoa. right away. One or two. Who are you? No. Ha, but Boone didn't a lot, get any. A lot of people they like They had it. flurries, right? Wow. Boone the other day? Yeah, they're fine. Yeah, it was nothing. Okay. Yeah, they're fine. But okay. it's been cold. Cold here. We did need the ice scraper, though. Does that count? Did you? I slept right I through did, it. Yeah. I really did. <laughs> I woke gone. up, it was all gone. So. It was the tiniest layer yeah, of ice. But it was there. It I appreciate the report. Tim Buckley was right. I said it would happen. I'm glad it that, did. That's good. He's <laughs> not a liar. <laughs> Check mark there. Check Hold me to it. All right, checks. time is running out to vote on our Friday Football Fever Game of the Week. Voting is underway on the website, but it closes in 34 minutes, oh, to be gosh. exact. Yes, they close <laughs> at 5. Right now, Northwest Guilford versus Southeast. That's in the lead for a crosstown matchup, cross-county matchup, if you want to say that. If you want to put some last-second votes in, just look for this story on the top of our homepage. It's at WFNYNews2.com. Five games to choose from, and you can vote as many times as you like. Again, it closes at 5 o'clock. Aaron, can you hear me? One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten. Miss Carmen, welcome. It's a pleasure to have you in the back as well. Can you hear me? How do I sound?
dance we'll party wake it music. Up. What is that? I like that. All right, welcome to the 4 to 5. Eric Chilton here with Ben Briscoe and Hunter Funk. And then over behind camera, too, is Jalen Gilkey. But he's waiting for his moment in the sun. He'll, he'll be out here in just a minute. We are so glad you're here with us, whether it's through the W4 News 2 app, Fire Stick, Roku, our website. However you're here, thank you. Yep. Hello to everyone watching on Facebook as well. We love that. Today we'll be chatting about some cool cocktail reviews that's blowing up on social media. The Charlotte Hornets tipping off the season and movie series that have gone on for just too long. There's a lot of a lot of I those. think we have a long list for you guys. But before we get to all that, we have to talk to you about the Guilford County Schools Career and Technical Education Program. Its purpose is to help students soar to greatness by giving them information about careers in skilled trains. And today, the program held a career event at the Greensboro Coliseum. WFMY News 2's Jalen Gilkey, I told you, who's coming he along. He was there for all the excitement. <laughs> Moment in the sun, Jalen. That's right. Yeah, guys, today over 800 fifth graders from across the county made their way to the Greensboro Coliseum to get a glimpse at what their future could possibly look like. Guilford County Schools Career and Technical Education Program is all about exposing kids to a variety of careers at an early age. Today's career fair had over 50 professionals from around the triad with the goal of inspiring the next generation. What they were able to do was just tour the whole facility of the Coliseum and actually see what different careers look like for their future. We had entrepreneurship, enlistment, enrollment, different opportunities for people to understand what was happening in those communities before they actually go to the different booths and actually see what was in store. From hairstylists to firefighters and EMS, to drone piloting and engineering. The options for students to learn were endless, and organizers say they just want kids to know anything is truly achievable. Well, the most basic thing we're doing is starting to talk to uh, children at an early age to let them know that anything is possible. And through CTE, which is Career and Technical Education, it's a great opportunity for students to see how the activities and the, and the subjects that they're learning in school, how it can be applied in real world settings, and start to get them to think about life beyond high school and as uh, future adults. Now this was the first year that the district had offered this event to fifth graders, but the plan is for this to become an annual event. I have a very important question. Did you try on the firefighter outfit? I did not. I let the kids try on the firefighter <laughs> outfit. I wasn't really willing to take my shoes off and do all of that. Well, it's a lot. It's a, it's a process. Yeah, it and then you got to do it in a minute. I, I was already on a time crunch. Cool, but I mean, unbelievable. I wish I was able to participate in something like this when I was younger. You know, we had career days and stuff, but nothing as interactive yeah, as this. Yeah. Especially back then, drone piloting wasn't even a thing. Really. Yeah, that's that was for the, for the military. That, that was, was it. for the right. military. <laughs> we didn't hear it that. Was, that's hands on. I mean, that's super hands on. I love that's good for that age group, too. They're trying to figure out what they're going to be one day. So. I was going to say it was about cool. that age group that I figured out that I wanted to do this. So, I mean, hey. Anything when you're a kid that gets you out of your immediate world exactly. and lets you know there's more out there yeah. is mm -hmm. a good experience. Or just out of school for the day, right? I mean, right? <laughs> nothing wrong with taking let's a bus be and going honest. somewhere. Let's, yeah, that's what Field they're all trips thinking. were never a bad nice thing. No. Jason's deli lunch. I mean, that's right. <laughs> couldn't perfect. beat that. Learned a lot. Love it. Absolutely. Yeah. <laughs> all right, we're talking about schools. So how about this? Today, GCS also kicked off School Bus Safety Week with um, ev evacuation training at Brooks Global. Um, and bus drivers and students practiced what to do if there's an emergency right on the bus. The drivers went over what students need to do if they have to get out of any of the exits, including that roof hatch that we always talk about. School officials say that they were glad to see students. They were having fun, but want them to remember the importance. What I hope the students today remember more than anything else is school bus is school safety. Their driver is trying to keep them safe on their route to school, to and from home to school. This is the first year they've done a training like this. The training is mandatory and will take place on the first and fifth months of the school year. Their next goal is to include middle schoolers in this training as well. After too many close calls with cars driving right past stop school buses, something that's illegal, don't do it, parents are now taking action. In Pennsylvania, schools installed cameras on buses. They capture the license plates of cars that speed by or pass when the stop arm is out. The fine, 300 bucks. The times that it is right now, people are more aggressive, less patient. Nationwide, school buses are passed illegally over 17 million times a year. It can be deadly for children. Do not do it. 
In a separate type of crash yesterday in Winston-Salem, the police department says a driver crashed into a school bus after trying to turn right from the far left lane. Police say there were five children on board. Luckily, none of them were injured. And let's get to your four to five roundup. Greensboro police need information to solve a homicide. Officials say 34 year old Anthony Cooper Jr. died today after being shot. Now it happened just before 630 last night. Police say officers responded to Moses Cone Hospital after Cooper Jr. was dropped off there. Investigators determined he was shot on Holt Avenue. And if you know anything, call 911. Right now, the Greensboro Police Department is short staffed. They say of the Greensboro's 122 total vacancies, 108 of those are sworn officer positions. In about an hour, GPD will host a hiring fair at the Police Academy building on North Church Street. Starts at 530, runs through 8 o'clock tonight. Anybody who's interested in law enforcement career of any type is invited. And the one stop early voting period begins tomorrow for the November general election. Now those looking to avoid the long lines on election day can use this opportunity to vote and get it out of the way. Also, those who miss their chance to register can do so and vote on the same day. Now today I spoke to a first time poll worker in Rockingham County as preparations get underway. I just look forward to, to running into people that come up here to vote that I haven't seen, been out of school 50 years, you know. One stop early voting ends on November 5th, just before Election Day on the 8th. As they become available, you can find early voting sites and schedules by county on the State Board of Elections website. There are already allegations of voter fraud flying in this election. From North Carolina to Florida now, where there is outrage this afternoon over newly released body cam footage showing the arrest of several people accused of voter fraud. A 2018 state constitutional amendment restored the right to vote for most ex-felons, except those convicted of murder or felony sex offenses. Critics say part of the problem here in Florida is that the voter registration form does not say which former felons can have their right to vote restored and which ones cannot. Well, do you like it or not? Uh, we have the cold weather. It's been here and really it's still going to kind of stick around for a couple of more days. Blue sky, nothing to worry about weather wise. It's just that cool temperature that remains. Not so bad outside right now. A little warmer than we were yesterday at this time, sitting at 55 degrees. There is a bit of a breeze that's blowing in from the west northwest and that'll continue throughout the rest of the evening. Uh, temperatures locally in your hometowns. We're at 56 in Winston, 55 over in Ashboro and 57 in Burlington. Some 40s this afternoon up in the high country for the folks that are looking at the leaves on the trees. Right now that wind, as I mentioned, it is still coming in at a swift clip about 5 to 15 miles per hour, a little gusty, but not quite as much so as yesterday. Overnight tonight, it will be another cold night. Temperatures will be dipping down quite a bit, going from the 50s now down to the 30s by midnight, and we're waking up to temperatures right around freezing yet again. Just like today, we could have some lows in the 20s for many areas, right around freezing in most of the triad cities and yes you might have to scrape the windshield just like you did earlier today however the cold weather is limited because we have a warm-up on the way for the weekend temperatures will be getting back closer to average for this time of year the average high is 70 that's right about where we will be this weekend and into next week Right now we are on top of breaking news in Orange County regarding the deaths of 14 year old Lyric Woods and 18 year old Devin Clark. The district attorney has decided the 17 year old suspect in this case will be tried as an adult. The suspect is accused of killing Woods and Clark last month. Clark was a senior and football player at Eastern Alamance High School. ATV riders found their bodies in the woods in Western Orange County. Right now we just wrapped up talking with the Orange County DA. We'll learn more about his decision ahead at 5 o'clock. All right, on to lighter subjects now. The two Mount Airy waiters, they are tearing up TikTok one drink at a time. Benson White and Alex Puckett work at a sushi restaurant in Mount Airy, and one night they had a brilliant idea to let a roulette-style wheel decide what kind of cocktails they were make, good or bad, and try them. Now, 50,000 followers uh, later, cocktail roulette is a thing on TikTok. Take a look. Hello everyone, I'm Alex. And I'm Vincent. I just kind of one day, I was like, you want to make a drink review on TikTok? And he was like, yeah. So he started doing that, and then he called me one night, and he was like, oh my god, I have the best idea. And he 
came up with cocktail roulette. I don't know what I want to drink. I don't want it to be fruit. I mean, pumpkin spice. I'm a it's fruit. fall. And we just put random liquor, random liqueur, and a random mixer. And whatever it lands on, wherever we spin it, we have to make the drink and taste it. When it works out, it's like, oh, cool, we can actually like, serve this. Like, whenever it's bad, it's just like, we stop the camera and we're like, no way we actually have to drink this. <laughs> Like, there's no way. It's normally the mixer that messes it yeah. up. Like, I mean, you can put shit, like a liquor and a liqueur together, but then like when you have like Bloody Mary mix or like olive juice or something Gosh. crazy, you have to mix with it. It's not gonna work out very well. So bad. Yeah, how's it smell? Ooh, 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 ooh. I think it's really good. I mean, I wouldn't say like I'll probably I'll probably never quit my job to do TikTok, but it would be cool just to you know keep getting bigger and bigger to where you can eventually like, start making a little bit of money or something like that. I mean, I wanted to be as big as it possible. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I wanted to yeah. be as big as possible. Oh my gosh. That is so good. <laughs> what was so good? Or is that I know, he needs to tell us. Um, yeah, he sent, me, sent us like 12 TikTok videos that they've done, but yeah, they're over 50,000 followers now. And so they spin the wheel and whatever liquor comes up, they use that and then like a mixer and then a juice. And he said, sometimes it's horrible other times. Mm -hmm. And then that's funny too, right? People yeah. watch for that. The one thing that he did, uh, Benson, who was the one that said it was so good at the end, mm -hmm. he played a joke on Alex. Alex had never heard of this, which is kind of a joke drink that people used to play on each other in bars. It's called the cement mixer. Have you ever heard of that? Mm -mm. All I right, so it's it's Bailey's and pure lime juice, and but you mm -mm. put it in your mouth and you shake it up. The thing here is that the lime juice makes the Bailey's curdle, and so it's disgusting. He did it to him, and it was. Hilarious. <laughs> He's laughing. It would be funny to watch, but ugh. Yeah, it's a joke that so people play So now I've got to do that to other people, right? Yeah, we, have, we've let it out of the bag now. Have <laughs> they learned any advice doing all this? Like, what mixes well together? Well, they're bartenders anyway, and so they said we just like to kind of let things roll, but they've come up with, I think he said, two or three drinks that wow. now are on the menu because of that roulette wheel. You're going to have to put this on your Facebook page. So I, you I need to do that. Yeah. yeah. Yes. Or I, and we're going to link you on uh, WFYNews2.com on this article to their TikTok account yeah. too, so you can see it. Oof. All right, we're coming back. Stay there. Yes to Guilford. Hi, Mike Check. Mike Check, Mike Check, Mike Check, one, two, three. Mike Check, Mike Check, Mike Check. So. to the table uh yeah sure i can do that no problem
Hey, you know this, the 2022 to 23 NBA season is officially underway. The first two games of the season tipped off last night. And tonight, we'll finally get to see what the Charlotte Hornets have put together for their season opener, which is against the San Antonio Spurs. WFMI News 2's Amanda Ferguson gives us some insight on that first game of the year. Amanda. The Charlotte Hornets opening the season tonight on the road, taking on the San Antonio Spurs. We got a little taste of this year's team when the Hornets came to Greensboro for a preseason game earlier this month. But some things have changed since then. LaMelo Ball is out tonight with a sprained left ankle. He was injured in the Hornets preseason game against the Wizards last week. Anthony Gill stepped on his foot. He hasn't practiced since, and there's no timetable on when he'll return. As for his brother, LiAngelo Ball, they won't be playing together anymore. LiAngelo was waived by the team over the weekend. He played in three preseason games with the team, didn't score more than two points, though. He averaged about five points, one rebound with the Swarm last season. And forward Miles Bridges also not with the team. He faced his charges in a domestic violence case. His hearing was delayed for the seventh time, now set for November 3rd. He was arrested back in June after beating his girlfriend in front of their two children. He was the Hornets' leading scorer last season. So the question is, are they going to be able to survive without LaMelo Ball as he recovers? Because, I, I mean, that's that's the star, obviously. Yeah. And, I mean, I don't, can they make the playoffs without him? We'll see how long he'll be out for. I mean, he should be back in a couple of weeks, I would think. But I don't know. I mean, they've got a new team. They've got a new head coach. So the plan is to make the playoffs because they haven't in such a long time. In some ways, I think the games are more exciting when they're all new players. And mm -hmm. the kind of old is. guard's kind of gone. Because you don't know what to expect. Sure. Right. It could be fire. Yeah, you know, you might have this perfect puzzle. Yeah, you're right. It might mesh well. And I mean, they, they haven't had success. <laughs> yeah, I mean, they haven't had success in a while, but that's the best part about a new season is it's new, so we get to see what, what it'll be. Well, and the bottom line is if you haven't been to an NBA game, it's a party. So, it is. I mean, a party. You, you can enjoy the basketball or you can just have a great time, you know, either way. And listen, we're used to pro teams losing around here, so it's not that big right. right. Either we way, it's going to be fun. Team, yeah. we tend to, we're trying to come back on some of them, we right? Are. Like the Panthers right now. We'll get there. We're getting we there. Yeah, we're trying. We'll have good draft picks next year. At least we know that. So. <laughs> yeah. Well, speaking of sports, time's running out to vote on our Friday Football Fever Game of the Week. Voting is underway on our website, but the polls close at 5. Right now, Northwest Guilford and Southeast Guilford is in the lead for a crosstown matchup. Now, if you want to be put in for some last-second votes, just look for this story at the top of our homepage on WFMYNews2.com. There are five games to choose from, and you can vote as many times as you like. Now, remember, if you don't have very long, the polls close at 5. We'll be back after break.
There is no enemy like the past. That is the next chapter of the Adonis Creed story in Creed 3. This is the trailer for the third movie of the Rocky spinoff starring Michael B. Jordan, Jonathan Majors. Uh, and uh, a childhood friend here of Creed's is in this, but the two are headed on a collision course. You know how that works, right into the ring. Creed 3 will hit theaters on March 3rd. So I asked you on Facebook, what movie series do you think went on way too long? <laughs> Are you saying this one's going on too long? And why? I didn't say that. I didn't say that. <laughs> I'll let you infer. <laughs> um, Tracy says, um, Friday the 13th, after three, they should have stopped. Halloween, it's way past time for someone to kill Michael Myers. <laughs> Grease 2 should have never been made. I agree mm -hmm. with that. Uh, they already had perfection. Everything else was doomed to fail, she said. Um, and then if you uh, look at our next one here, um, Tyra said the Fast and the Furious movies, way too many of those. <laughs> yes. Greg said Jurassic Park, loved the original, not necessarily the whole series. And then um, Michael might get in trouble over this one. Star Ooh. Wars, he says, over oh. 40 years of sequels and prequels, a lot of people would take issue with that, okay. but <laughs> I don't know, with sequels, I, I would say Fast and Furious for sure, because now I don't even, I won't watch them now, because it's, uh, how many different ways can you chase cars around, you know? If you're going to have a sequel and a triquel and whatever yeah, you call yeah. them, they have to totally change the concept somehow. Yeah. I want a different character's perspective, mm -hmm. I want a modern twist, mm -hmm. something that makes me rethink the original, not the same thing again. I think that's a fair way to say it too because you get so used to it and then you like the first one, right? You like it so much. Then the second one, okay, maybe it, can it was spoil good. It, it spoils yeah. it. You don't want to watch it. So as my much favorite anymore. like trilogy though is Back to the Future. That was done so well. I thought okay. even mm -hmm. the third one was weak yeah. compared to the other two. They really did. And they shot one and two, I heard, almost simultaneously. Making more movies almost makes everyone grumpy, usually. It seems like it's not received very well. Ooh. But I will say this year, the Top Gun movie Everyone went yes. nuts over it, and it. That I think true. it's better than the original. That's what I would says. say. I've heard that over and over. Have you seen it I yet? I have not seen it I yet. I haven't I'm seen embarrassed it to say. I got yeah, to see you're it. You're not embarrassed. It's embarrassed. different for different people. Some people are very connected to that first movie. Mm -hmm. uh, I'm not. Like I saw it for the first time a couple months ago, uh, and I thought, <laughs> yeah, I don't. Know. I thought the There's first movie was like possible. I thought it was not that good. Have you seen Pretty Woman? Yes. Okay. Are uh, they doing a sequel? No, I haven't no, seen they that. won't. You haven't seen Sixteen Candles? <laughs> oh, that's a great one. Gone with the Wind. Hey, when you're a kid, you just watch whatever movies your parents have. Right? <laughs> like, Blame I'm not the going parents. To, I'm not going to Blockbuster and getting Sixteen Candles. <laughs> 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 yeah, it's like, oh, what's on the VCR list? But it's here? on the TV at least five times oh, a day. Oh, it is. That's true. It's like Mrs. Doubtfire. Yes. On every you time. Have seen that. I love Mrs. So Doubtfire. I do yeah. too. I love <laughs> that one. All right, are we doing a weather check here? I think so. Let's try it. Yeah. Hello. Ooh. Here's your, uh, Hello. your weather check. Hello. I need to get my I will throw a woman at you. <laughs> We're going to start you out with a seven day forecast because I did not bring my clicker. But now that I have it, we can show you that still first. Uh, 50s in the uh, tomorrow. We're still going to stay cool out there over the next couple of days, but it will be warming quite a bit into the weekend. So today we've been in the 55 degree range back into the 60s. We go for your Friday and then for the weekend itself, we should be bumping up into those 70s. So all outdoor plans, festivals, whatever you might be doing this week look to be in very good shape. We have that nice blue sky right now. Temperature is at 55 in Greensboro and you shouldn't really be warming any more than this. The one thing about these nights is once the sun goes down, the temperatures drop very, very quickly. So be ready for that by around seven to eight o'clock tonight it'll start to get pretty cool. Notice by midnight, we're already inching toward the 30s. It'll be another cold morning right around 32 degrees, and that's going to be your early Thursday. Bring the scraper. Just leave it in the car at this point. Keep it in the glove box. That's what it's for. Uh, we'll be right around 60 tomorrow afternoon with a good breeze. And as we were saying, big warm up on the way for the weekend. Don't go to the movies. Go outside.
Hello, it's a mic check for you. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten. You're really, you're really good. I check one, one, two, one, three. Two, three. Amber Lake is a rock star and, and me, bum, bum, bum. If you want to oh, hey, check, check, one, two, one, two, one, two, three, one, two, three, four to five. Hello, one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, okay. Ten-year-old Lyric Woods and 18-year-old Devin Clark, ATV riders, found their bodies in the woods in western Orange County last month. We talked to yeah. District Attorney Jeffrey Neiman, who says the decision to charge... For my two cents. It's not even Halloween yet, and I'm already seeing Christmas sales online and decorations in the store. With inflation and the cost of everyday items on the rise, financial experts say now is the time to start planning your holiday shopping. I've always been the person who waits until the last minute to do my Christmas shopping. This pattern of procrastination has gotten me into a bit of a pickle in the past. Either the gift I wanted to get for someone was sold out, or the price went up exponentially. Experian offers several ways to fight inflation when holiday shopping to help you have the best holiday yet. First, make a list of friends and family you want to include on your shopping list. Then, create a budget to reduce overspending. Once you decide how much you want to spend on gifts, stick to that amount. Experian says paying with cash can also help you stick with your budget. Number two, plan ahead. Take advantage of upcoming sales and promotions like Black Friday, Cyber Monday, and National Free Shipping Day. Three, comparison shop. Apps like Red Laser and Shop Savvy can help you save time by showing what retailers charge for their products. Last, shop early. According to Experian, holiday sales in October increased over the past three years. If money is tight, that's okay too. You can always gift someone your love and your time. Access service can be worth more than a material item. If it comes from the heart, that's what matters most. That's my two cents. That's your four to five. WFNY News 2 at five starts now. We're starting with breaking news at 5 p.m. The Orange County DA says the 17-year-old suspect arrested for the murder of two high schoolers will be moved to adult court. Yeah, the DA is asking for a transfer right now and are now and right now the suspect is still in juvenile custody. WFMY News 2's Amber Lake spoke with the Orange